Hey guys and welcome to this speed painting walkthrough tutorial thing and this is the painting so far. Well, I'm probably going to add to it later and change a little bit but yeah, who cares. So, like all my other paintings, first we need some sort of sketch. So here's a sketch, if you want you can do the whole Andrew Loomis face construction thing or get head reference or just sketch what you think a face is. Um, the easiest way is what I'm doing at the moment, which is front on, because all the features there, you if you know basic construction, you should have it. You should be able to do one pretty easy. So here I'm just sort of rendering the head a little bit. I'm not going to be going this sort of route. I'm not going to you know render the hell out of it, in the sense of it being realistic and it having realistic skin pores and all that sort of stuff. This one's going to be full expressionism, like you can see on, like, earlier. So, I don't really like to have too accurate an outline or sketch when I do this. I generally like it to be a little bit wacky, so I, I, I go pretty fast. So, what you saw there was about 10 minutes, probably less, and this rendering stage is about, I think it was 40 minutes. I've just sped it up quite a lot because I think the next part is a lot more important. So, it's going pretty good. Uh, if I wanted to, I could sort of, at this point, take it to a realistic sort of stage. You know, make fix the proportions and change a few things here and there. But what I'm doing is going the expression stick route. So, as you can see at the moment, I'm already starting to think about the color scheme. Because on the right, there's this sort of purple, purpley blue thing happening here and orange on the left, which uh, blue and orange are contrasting colors. And then, considering the creams, if you put purple in there, that's going to be, you know, contrasting once again. And for it to have that sort of standout look and all that, you really need to think of these sort of things. So, I'm really preparing for it to be a little bit more bold. Even if these colors are muted, it's going to have that contrasting effect. So now I'm just sort of contouring every bit that I see to give it its form. If you want to see another version of this video, um, I did an earlier painting which was a self-portrait speed painting where I pretty much did the same thing. So this one's just going to be a little bit more detailed. <laughs> so she's looking a little bit sad and old and weird at the moment, but she eventually gets there. Um, I really tried to make the eyes green and I didn't try to do all the little parts in the iris. I just tried to do it with strokes. As you can see with the eyelids as well, they're just strokes and it went and built up that way. So it, when it comes to the features and the length, like at the moment the proportions aren't exactly correct, but that can all be changed. At the start I wasn't exactly sure what expression I wanted to put on the girl, so I sort of just sort of floated in between. But as you can see, the marks of the sadness through the eyebrows sort of change that. In the end, I generally go back to this sort of mixed expression because, I don't know, I didn't want to paint sad, I didn't want to paint happy, I didn't want to paint cute, I wanted it to sort of be in between. I don't know why, but, you know, you got to try something new every now and then. That sort of mixed feeling can also sort of bring out a sense of questioning, like, why is she this way, what expression is that, it might even make you look a little bit longer than just, oh, she's sad, oh, she's happy, oh, look at those pouty lips. You get what I mean? It's all about the time they spent. So here I'm using the liquify tool and I'm just fixing a little bit of proportions. So, as I told you before, pr proportions don't matter as much, but it still needs to be human for the most part. Um, so, generally whenever I do any of these strokes, if I'm not liking how it's turning out, if a light source isn't defined enough, if it's looking a bit off and not true to form, I'll just pretty much go over it with a colour, then go over that colour with another colour until it builds up into that way. You can also do, um, I will say you can also do sort of character versions as well, so say I was to paint the realistic version of this, I could then morph her face, and then I could add texture. There's plenty of ways to go about this. There's no right way. Uh, for you people out there, it's it's simpler than you think, and you can easily develop your own way. But here I'm just flipping the image, which all digital artists do. It's, it's a good way to sort of see what you're not already seeing, because your mind tends to get tricked. So as you can see, when it's flipped this way, it still looks pretty good, so you know it's accurate. 
right here it's looking pretty good and I saved this variation of the image as well so if I ever wanted to I could go right back to it and paint from here so I've saved like seven variations of this I think I think I may have deleted a few just because of file size but I've got a few variations so if I don't like the outcome of the end I can easily morph this one with the other one you know overlay it do tons of different things so that's always a good thing I will say a lot of the strokes I'm doing, a lot of the really, really drastic stuff I'm doing on another layer and then if it works out I'll put it down, like I'll merge it down to save a little bit of memory. But it's always good to have those options. If you have a computer that can handle like a, gig a gigabyte of memory, like a gigabyte of a, you know, a Photoshop image, by all means use as many layers as you want as long as it doesn't bog down your computer. That way you have a hell of a lot of freedom down the line. And um, if, like me, you paint slank and then you hate it, it's good. I sort of think of my paintings as, you know, on again, off again girlfriends. When I first paint it, I love it. Then when I'm finished, I hate it. Then later on, I want it back again. And I want to, you know, you know what I mean. So at the stage, I sort of hate the painting because I've finished it, but... I'll probably go back again and again and again with the same love-hate relationship. So here I'm just building up the strokes and it may look a tiny bit blurry for you but that's because I've got such a small screen it's like 15 inches I think and I'm recording at full HD so I've had to zoom in on sections just so it would show only the only the portrait. I don't have enough money to buy another monitor so yeah. So right now I'm just building up once again all these strokes, all these little strokes that you would never notice are what make this painting, what makes these sorts of paintings good. Excuse me. So, you see that background that I did? It's very, very simple, but it doesn't take away and it adds to it. It also sort of, like, leads you into the portrait. So that's an al that's always a good way of thinking. So the bottom where I've done the strokes from black to the skin color that leads you in, the, the strokes around lead you in, and generally I'm trying to lead you in to around her eye section. Uh, I should probably say the hair is going to lead you in as well. One very thing, the most important thing when doing one of these paintings, and I, I cannot stress this enough, the most important thing, music. I don't care what you listen to, just put it on, put it up loud, and you know, get into it. If you think too much about um, the little things, if you're not having a good time, these sorts of paintings tend to go to crap. Because with these sorts of paintings, you only you only need to think of how form goes. And everybody pretty much knows how the form goes, like it rounds at the cheek, the nose obviously protrudes, so that's going to have a sort of effect of back and forward, so the tip of the nose is going to be lighter than the cheeks and so on. So things like that, that's all you need to know. Just simple, simple things. And <laughs> you can have a lot more fun if you're just, you know, there listening to music, painting away, blowing your head, doing whatever you want. Uh, I, would, I would give you a list of music, but considering, you know, a lot of people have their crappy music tastes. So let's move on here. Um, you can see with certain sections, like the eyes, the nose, and the lips and all that, I'm not... I'm not rendering then adding strokes, I'm pretty much just using the strokes to render. So they're not blended, they're just sort of laid on top of each other until they get the right value. Um, as you can probably see at the moment, there's a little bit of colour contrast happening here. And it's looking pretty good so far. In the After this I'm probably going to do something, you know... Okay, I won't tell you what I'm going to do because a good artist never tells you what's wrong with a painting, otherwise that's all the viewer will ever see. Um, suffice to say, I'm probably going to do a tiny bit more here and there to it. So here I'm just screwing around. Um, I thought of putting a rose just below her, holding it maybe an object, and then I thought maybe she's wearing some sort of, I don't know, those robe things. Pretty much just trying everything. So here I'm just trying a few variations, so I'm going through different layer styles and I'm doing a little bit of blending options here and there. And I'm just trying to see what works best. I should say as well, 
I add a little bit of black behind the actual foreground, which is her, to give her a little bit more depth, to make her stand out a little bit more. So we're getting to the end now. It's probably got about another minute left. And this is one variation of the paintings. I, I like this one, but I'm not exactly sure about it. So what I did was I grabbed that one, I grabbed her face, I erased all of it, and then went back to a previous one. So I've merged the new with the old, so I've got the freedom and the expressionistic painting waves of the old one spliced with the new one. So here I'm also trying a few more um, variations. So I've got a few different strokes happening here, and I'm erasing it so she's clear and all that. I don't end up using the sort of textual backgrounds, I ended up using the original one. But who knows, that could very easily change. Check back to my website, I'll link to it. And um, I'll just update it every now and then if it does change. So this is what it ended up like for now, but it, yeah, it's going to change. Uh, here's a little bit closer, and then the next one's even closer. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I shall see you next time.